Okay, so I've already applied my second layer of MRA. For time purposes, I didn't include that. We always want to allow two minutes between each coat. Now for this coat, you actually want it to be a very thin layer. So you can come back through and kind of wipe off any excess. Now, in this example, because I use this cast repeatedly for doing tutoring sessions on, the line is excessively black. There's an excessive amount of graphite there, so you'll see that it smears. Now, when you do this, it will smear to a degree, but not as much as it's smearing here because of the excessive amount of pencil that's on there. So just wipe off any excess. So you want it to be nice and slick, but keep in mind any extreme excess is just gonna kind of cause bubbling. So that's why you wanna get rid of it. Okay, so once we've done that, the next step will be to apply the triad material. So have wiped off all excess. Hands kind of get a little goopy after a while. So it's good to have a paper towel so you're not constantly having to change your gloves so many times. Because then it'll be very difficult to open the bags. Okay. So when we do the maxillary cast, we're going to place an entire thickness a triad material on there. Now key things to know, triad material is roughly 2, 2.5 millimeters thick. Now you want the entire custom impression tray to be about 2 millimeters thick. So you want to minimally apply pressure here. Now when you apply pressure, you want to apply pressure first to the medium palatal suture. And then from there, you want to push outwards towards the ridge. Now what that's gonna do is you're pushing any air bubbles that might get trapped, you're pushing them to the outer edge. So sealing it from the internal surface to the outer edge. Now, there is two things to take note of. One, you don't want to trap air bubbles in, but you also don't want to apply too much pressure that you may get too thin. Okay, so if you see, I'm rolling my finger, so I'm rolling it to the outer edge. Rolling it outwards, okay? So now we have the entire palette flat and we are moving out over the ridge. Okay, so again, from the crest, downwards. Press down. I think this is a, a little bit of old. Sometimes it cracks. Um, and if that happens, you just kind of mush it together, okay? Now from the crest down. And do you see how with each time I'm doing that, I'm, I'm really pushing that air through. Now, if you have an air bubble trapped, you will see, see how it's nice and solid? But if you zoom in right there, you can see kind of a little gray spot. Okay, so that can happen. Now, if you find yourself in that situation, you can put a small puncture hole, and now we're just sealing it up, okay? And do you see how the and you have to make sure to rub it because you want to close that hole because you want absolutely no breaks in the MR and in, in the triad material because you want a full suction. Okay. So no other graying areas. Now once you've 
And if you have applied minimal pressure, then you can be confident that you're gonna be in about the two millimeter range. Now, once you've done that, you can use a brand new 25 blade on a red handled surgical knife, also known as the Bar Parker. And you wanna make sure that your edges meet your outline, okay? Now, going just on the external surface, right, so as you trim, you'll be able to get closer to your line. Try not to lift it up too much because you can incorporate air bubbles. Can you see that? And I'm just gliding. Following the frenula. And see with a nice brand new blade, cuts like butter. You'll notice a difference if you've done several practices and are using a dull blade. It kind of crumples beneath the knife and it drags. So once you see that, you'll really come to appreciate a brand new knife. Okay, so again, your edges are gonna be slightly thicker, closer to the 2.5 millimeter. So you have a little wiggle room to kind of press everything down ever so slightly if you did cut slightly short. Okay. See how it's a little bit thicker, the lip is a little up. So we're just flattening everything out. Very minimally. Okay. Okay. Now from there, you can use a little of the MRA just to wet the instrument ever so slightly, not an excess amount. This is just gonna allow you to glide it along a little easier. And do you see how I'm using the back edge to kind of tuck it and push it? Okay, so this is going to allow me to kind of smooth it up so it's no rough angles. Now, you'll see some people who trim it after the fact. I find, you know, the beautiful thing about dentistry is there are many ways to do it, but I find that doing all of this ahead of time allows for their, um, you can either spend the time trimming or you can spend the time positioning it like I am now. And I find that it saves a significant amount of time. And I've gone around the entire border once. Now I will put it in the triad machine for two minutes with the table spinning. And while that is cooking, I'm gonna jump to my mandibular. So again, being as efficient as possible with time. So we've already wipe the excess off on this one. Now, since there is the lingual area, you want to cut so that way you can spread it, spread out the triad. Now here, 
will go from the center again. But for the mandibular, the center is the residual ridge. So you will line your finger across soft, soft pressure. You don't want to make it too thin along the crest of the residual ridge. All the way to the retromolar pad. Now once you do that, you can, in either direction that you prefer, downward motion. And you see how I'm kind of pushing even in with my nail a little bit because we want to get into that sulcus. Your lingual sulcus. Okay. And see, no air bubbles. So again, the same. Moving downwards. Really getting into that. Again, no air bubbles. Now with your brand new blade. And if you want, you can even cut on a little bit further on the outer surface because you can always go back and do a second cut. You want to use your green handled knife to pop off the cast. Now this one came off easily because I had just popped it off actually, but yours won't come off that easily. Now once you have it off, you just want to put it right back on immediately. One of the ways that these can rock is if you play with it too much or you leave it off of the cast while it's still warm. Now your Next step will be to make an 8 millimeter by 10 millimeter handle. <clears throat> so one way to do that is you can make one mark and you can measure your 10 millimeters, right? You can make another mark. and mark your eight millimeters, okay? Now the thickness of this is 2.5, right? So 2.5 times two, right? And we're about roughly a little bit more than the thickness. So we're at five now. So we're gonna fold it once more, okay? And so now we're at about 5.7. 7.5. Okay, so we're just over. So if you can look, looking down, can you see this? Bird's eye view. You can see that I'm just short of that line, right? And if you look here, you can see that I'm just over that line. So, some things that you can do, right, we're just going to push it downwards. Now, pushing it down will make it shorter, but fatter. Right? And notice how as I'm pushing it down, I'm holding it. Okay, so see how it looks a little bit more square? I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, and flip it again. We're just going to do this pretty much on all sides. It also will be compressing the material together. Okay. All right, so now what we can do is kind of see where we are, right? If we're if you find that you are too fat, you can pull it, which will thin it out. If you find that you are too short, you can push it in, which will thicken it up. You can also push it downwards. Okay. So different ways, just understanding how you can manipulate triad material will allow you to um, do a lot with it. 
very quickly. Okay, so see how I'm just kind of pulling it out. And if you look over, I'm right where I need to be, right? And then here, right about where I need to be. Now, again, no matter how perfect you make this now, it's going to change as you add it. Okay, because again, you're manipulating it. Now the key here is that it has to be right dead on the center of the crest of the residual ridge. Any lingual, that's a deduction. Any buckle, another deduction. Okay. So it's going to be essential that you try to get it right on the crest without manipulating it any or pushing it over to one side or the other. Okay. Now once you have it where you think you want it to be, you can come and cut off the handles. Once we're there, we're going to come over here and see with your red handled knife. Be careful not to push it lingually though. So if you're nervous about that, you can even position it ever so slightly to the buckle. Okay, and see, now the next thing is it needs to have a concavity. So by pushing it in, now we're pushing it right back to where it needs to be, right? And see how I'm holding it? That's one way to do it. So it's easier to create the concavity prior to its setting rather than incorporating it after the fact. Okay. So do you see how it's forming just a little bit of a lip? It's where my finger was. Perfect concavity. Okay, see how it's flat there? We're just gonna continue it on. And then you can do the same. To the internal surface. Kind of go back. Make sure you didn't distort it any. And kind of do the same thing this way. You can even use the back of your red handle knife. See, to kind of push it in. And see how I'm holding it and kind of pushing it over. Still doing exactly what my finger was doing a minute ago. You just want to create that concavity. Now the importance of the concavity is that it will allow you to have gripping when you're pulling it out of the mouth. Okay. 